energy balance problems are generally concerned with what energy is moving and where is it going. When you have steam in the equation, then that means you have to account for not only energy change if something is heating up or cooling down, but steam gives up most of its energy during a phase change. And during that phase change, you don't have a difference in temperature. You have energy basically that is given off as the steam is converting from vapor to liquid. And that's really important to account for in your energy balance when you're working with steam in energy balance problems. So let's take a look at what that looks like in an example problem. Here's an example problem that involves steam. We're using that steam to heat a food product from a start to a final temperature. We know how much steam we're using and we want to figure out how much food product can we heat to that desired final temperature with three kilograms per second of steam. First up, as always, we have to draw our diagram. Here's our heat exchanger. Now I'm gonna draw a line through the middle of our heat exchanger because we have an indirect heat exchanger and that means there is no mixing in this particular heat exchanger. So we have steam coming in and out, we have product coming in and out, but we don't have any mixing as that happens. So as you can see, Product comes in on one side, steam comes in on another side. We do not have mixing of these particular streams. Next up is to write our energy balance. And this is going to look a lot like the energy balances we've seen before in that we have what's coming in equals what's going out. So let's write out what that's gonna look like. We'll start on the inside with our product. So that is going to be the mass of the product multiplied by the CP of the product, multiplied by the temperature of the product coming in, minus our reference temperature. So that looks just like the energy balances we've seen so far. The next term is our steam term, and that's going to look a little bit different. We do have the mass of our steam coming in, but this time we're not going to do a CP delta T, because our steam is going through a phase change and there is no delta T, it's zero. But our steam still has some energy. That energy is the enthalpy of steam coming in. We'll write that as HI. So we have two arrows coming in. We have two terms on our inside. That takes care of our inside. So we will work on the outside of our equation now. Again, we have the mass of the product, the CP of the product, and the temperature of the product coming out minus our reference temperature. So that's again like we've seen before. But our steam term is similar to the steam term on our inside of the equation. So in this case, again, because we just changed phase, we didn't change temperature, we are going to write the mass of the steam times the enthalpy of the steam coming out. So right now you might be wondering, well, how did you know that that steam didn't change temperature? I mean, we're going through a heat exchanger. How do you know that it just stopped right when it hit saturated liquid, which is liquid right at its boiling temperature, and it didn't cool down any further than that? Well, because the problem says that the steam enters the heat exchanger as saturated vapor, which is vapor at its boiling point. So it is right at its boiling point. It's just going to take a little bit of heat loss before that starts turning right back into condensate or saturated liquid. Those two terms are interchangeable, condensate and saturated liquid. We know the steam exits as saturated liquid, so it's liquid right at its boiling point. So if we come in as vapor right at its boiling point and we leave as liquid right at its boiling point, we didn't change temperature because we are still at that boiling temperature. All we did was change phase. Now you might also be thinking, well, I thought water boiled at 100 C. So this steam is at 125 C. How did it not change temperature? What you don't see is what that pressure is for that steam. Steam boils at 100 C at atmospheric pressure, 101.3 kilopascals. This steam has had a higher pressure because its boiling point is 125 C. And the reason we know its boiling point is 125 C is because it starts as saturated vapor, vapor at its boiling point, and leaves as saturated liquid, liquid at its boiling point. Therefore, 
its boiling point is 125 C because that's what temperature it is in the heat exchanger. So it stays 125 C all the way through that heat exchanger. But notice that we didn't have a temperature term in this particular equation. That's taken care of in your enthalpy of the steam. When you go to the steam tables and you look up enthalpy, you are going to be looking up enthalpy at 125 C. That information is what gives you your enthalpy values. Your temperature will never come into your equation directly, but you use it to look up your enthalpy. So that's how temperature gets used in this problem. All right, let's rearrange this equation. So we have all product terms on one side, all steam terms on the other side of the equation. We get done with that, this is what it looks like. All right, let's collect terms. All terms in common go on the outside of the parentheses. Other terms go inside the parentheses for both sides of the equation. There we go. There's our equation that we can solve. So what we're looking for here is the mass of the food product. We're given the CP of the food product in the problem. We're given the incoming outgoing temperatures of the product. We are given the mass of the steam and we can find the enthalpies of the steam in our steam tables. So all we're left with is mass of the product. So let's get that by itself. There you have it. There's our equation for mass of the product. Now, let's start plugging in values. First up, we need to look up what HI and HO are. Now, if we go to the steam tables, you're not going to see columns with HI and HO. You will see the enthalpy at saturated liquid. You will see the enthalpy at saturated vapor. So, when you look up HI and HO, HI, according to the problem, comes in, that's saturated vapor. HO, what comes out, is saturated liquid. Here, saturated liquid is usually written as HC. The C stands for condensate. Again, condensate and saturated liquid are pretty much interchangeable. So, if we look those up in the table, we get that HV is equal to... 2713 kilojoules per kilogram. HC is equal to 524.99 kilojoules per kilogram. Notice how much smaller HC is than HV. HC is about four times larger than HC. So you see the huge amount of heat we get out of one kilogram of steam converting from vapor to liquid. And so with steam and energy balances, we really focus on the phase change because that's where you get most heat transfer is that phase change from vapor to liquid. Now that we have all our numbers, let's go back to our equation for the mass of our product, plug everything in and see what we get. And there you have it. We can heat almost 32 and a half kilograms per second of product with this amount of steam. And you might be sitting here thinking, no, there's no way we can do that. That's so much product and not that much steam. But again, look at how much heat we're getting per kilogram of steam from just going from vapor to liquid. And looking at the specific heat of our product, it's pretty high, it's close to water, but it's not that big in comparison to how much heat we are getting from that phase change in steam. So this is actually a realistic amount of product that could be heated with three kilograms per second of steam. So when you have steam in your energy balance, a little really does go a long way. If we wanted to double check that we were correct, we could plug all our values back into our original equation where n equals out, make sure everything adds up, that both sides are equal, and we can check and see that indeed, you can heat this much product with three kilograms of steam. So that's our steam and energy balances. One thing to keep in mind, condensate has enthalpy. Do not forget that your steam coming out still has some energy associated with it. Even though it's in the liquid form, it still has some enthalpy. So that's a very common mistake to assume that all of the energy the, in your steam vapor goes over to your product side to heat it up. And that's not true because we are just changing phase. We're not cooling our steam all the way down to absolute zero. At absolute zero, our steam enthalpy is zero. And since I can't think of a process that actually does that, our condensate is definitely gonna have some enthalpy. 
Best way to check on that, check your number of terms. If you have four arrows in your diagram, you should have four terms in your energy balance. And that way you can make sure that you are properly accounting for the enthalpy carried by your product, the enthalpy carried by your steam, and you will be able to solve your energy balances that include steam correctly.